everyone. How are you feeling? You might be happy, sad, scared or even maybe you are embarrassed depending on your situation and mood. How would you feel when you pass the exam with flying colors? Obviously, you would feel extremely happy. How do you feel during examination? Maybe you feel nervous or tense? What emotion you go through when you hear a bad news? Maybe you feel scared or sad? Just think for a while. How would be your life without emotions? Mm, certainly meaningless and mechanical. Let's say you heard a bad news and no one is sad. Another example like you achieve something and no one is happy. There is no one to express or share emotion and feeling. We cannot think of our life without emotion and it has a substantial influence in our life particularly in our cognitive processes like perception memory reasoning and problem solving to begin with let us discuss the etymological meaning of emotion the word emotion has been derived from the Latin word e-mover, that is, to stir up or to excite. Emotion is something that will arouse you or move you or make you excite. Here we are with two definitions of emotion. According to Don Huckenberry and Sandra E. Huckenberry, an emotion is a complex psychological state that involves three distinct components, a subjective experience, a physiological response, and a behavioral or expressive response. So according to Hockenberry, it is a complex psychological state which comprises three elements or you can say three components. The first is subjective experience. It indicates our personal experience, how we feel, regarding a situation. A physiological response is the internal changes like increased BP, increased sugar level or dilation of pupil. A behavioral or expressive response are the overt behavior that can be observed by the external observer like our facial expression, voice, and the bodily movements, gestures or postures. Our next definition is given by Woodward. According to him, emotion is a moved or stirred up state of an organism. It is a stirred up state of feeling that is the way it appears to the individual himself. It is a disturbed muscular and glandular activity that is the way it appears to an external observer. So according to Woodward, emotion is something that will move you or it will stir you up or it will arouse you. He mentioned two things. One is the internal aspect, the other is the external aspect. The internal aspect refers to the experience, the subjective experience of the person regarding a situation which cannot be seen by others. It can be only filled by the person himself who is going through the emotion. And the external expression can be observed by others like our voice, facial expression and the gesture and the posture. Let us discuss the characteristics of emotion. Here I have five characteristics. Number one, emotions are subjective in nature. nature. Emotions are a result of external stimulus. Emotions energize a person. Emotions bring physiological and psychological changes. 
emotions may be pleasant or painful when i say emotions are subjective in nature it means the personal feeling of a person what the person believe or what a person are feeling emotional feelings are experienced before expression emotions are result of external stimuli or stimulus without the external stimulus there can be no arousal emotions energize a person as you all know when we face a stressful situation at that point of time our sympathetic nervous systems becomes active it prepares us to face the situation emotions bring physiological and psychological changes physiological changes are like changes in the rate of respiration dilation of pupil increase in sugar level erect hair on the skin muscular tension and tremors psychological changes are clouding of consciousness blocking of memory or you can say dis- decreased learning capability emotions can be categorized into two one is pleasant the other is painful when we say pleasant emotion the example of pleasant emotions are like surprise happiness joy euphoric the example of painful emotions are like sad anger disgust or fear now we will discuss the different types of emotion according to paul ekman there are six basic emotions like fear disgust anger surprise happiness and sadness later in the year 1999 he expanded the emotions by including some other emotions like excitement contempt shame pride satisfaction and sadness another person or you can say another psychologist robert plutchik in the year 1980 introduced the will of emotion in this will of emotion he proposed eight primary emotional dimension like happiness versus sadness anger versus fear trust versus disgust surprise versus anticipation by combining this primary emotions other emotions are arise for examples happiness plus anticipation is equals to excitement another example is anticipation plus joy equals to optimism move on to the next topic that is the theories of emotion here we will discuss three theories of emotion number 1 james land's theory then we will discuss canon bird theory and last sastre singer theory of emotion let us discuss the james land's theory there are two person one is william james the other is carl lange according to them the physiological arousal come first before we experience emotions here i have clarified the things there is an stimulus for example the stimulus is road accident when there is a road accident we go through some physiological arousal inside us for example our bp get high there is heart dropping or erect here and by interpreting of a physiological arousal we can say we are scared of the situation or we are frightened let us discuss this theory with another example like you are all alone in your home and there is no one and suddenly you heard a sound you there is a physiological arousal inside you it means that the stimulus that is the sound 
elicit the physiological response. For example, dilation of pupil, increase in sugar level, or changes in the rate of respiration. You interpret this physiological arousal as dangerous. As a result, you experience the emotion of fear. Therefore, the theory suggests that the environmental stimuli elicit physiological responses from viscera, that is the internal organs like heart and lungs. And this physi physiological responses is interpreted by you as a particular kind of emotions. Our next theory is Cannon Bird Theory. There are two persons, one is Walter Cannon, the other is Philip Bird. This suggests that we experience emotions and physiological arousal simultaneously. That means both emotions and physiological arousals takes place at the same time. Let us take an example. There is a stimulus, for example, a scary voice. When you hear a scary voice, it will stimulate your thalamus. And in turn, the thalamus will send the response to cerebral cortex. At the same time, it will send the response to the sympathetic nervous system and the muscles. The cerebral cortex, which help you to understand the situation, as a result, you will try to experience or you will try to give meaning to the situation. Simultaneously, your sympathetic nervous system will prepare you for the situation. That is, it will lead to physiological changes. Here we are with the third theory of emotion that is Saster Singles 2 theory or you can say two-factor theory. So there are two persons, Stanley Saster and Jerome Singer. According to this theory, our experience of emotion depends upon two factors. First, the physiological arousal. Secondly, the cognitive processing. Here you can look at the figure. There will be a stimulus which will elicit both physiological arousal and cognitive leveling and which in turn give rise to emotion. Let us take an example. You hear a scary sound. It will elicit physiological arousal. And at the same time, you try to do cognitive labeling. That means you try to interpret the situation. That is the stimulus. And as a result, you express or you experience an 